In this lesson, we will know what are the uses of Kirchhoff's laws, and let's begin with the first law. It is also called the junction rule. The submission of the currents entering any junction must equal the submission of the currents leaving that junction. The junction rule is a statement of conservation of charge. Whatever current enters a given point in a circuit must leave that point because charge can build up or disappear at a point. If we apply this rule to the junction in the figure, I1 equal I2 plus I3 or sigma i equals zero for a junction. For these figures on the left side, you can see that these two currents exit or leave the node or the junction while I1 and I2 enter it. So I1 plus I2 must equal I3 plus I4. In the second figure, I equal the submission of all these currents. We can find this by adding 5 plus 4 plus 2 minus 8, the only one that exits this node or junction, so I equals 3A. For this figure, I equals 0.5 minus 0.3 minus 0.1 equals 0.1 ampere. To find the values of I1, I2, and I3, let's begin from the node at which, or the resistance at which the current equals 7 ampere. So it divides here to 3 ampere and unknown value. So I3 must equal 4 ampere. Then it travels to this point at which it will be added to I2 to give 5 ampere, which means that I2 must equal 1 ampere. Then these 5 amperes will be added up to these 3 ampere to give I1, which must equal 8 ampere. You can make sure of this result if you go with the currents. These 8 amperes are also divided back again into 7 ampere and 1 ampere. The second law or loop rule. It says that the summation of the potential differences across all the elements around any closed circuit loop must be zero. The loop rule is equivalent to the principle of conservation of energy. Any charge that moves around any closed loop in a circuit starting and ending at the same point must gain as much energy as it loses. It gains energy as it is pumped through a source of EMF. Its energy may decrease in the form of a potential drop, negative IR, across a resistor or as a result of flowing backward through a source of EMF from the positive to the negative terminal inside the battery. In the latter case, electrical energy is converted to chemical energy as the battery is charged. So sigma V equal zero for a loop. The key rules for solving with Kirchhoff's rules. When applying Kirchhoff's rules, you must make two decisions at the beginning of the problem. First one, assign symbols and directions to the currents in all branches of the circuit. And don't worry about guessing the direction of a current incorrectly. The resulting answer will be negative, but its magnitude will be correct because the equations are linear in the currents all currents are to the first power. The second decision is to choose a direction for traversing the loop. When applying the loop rule, you must choose a direction for traversing the loop and be consistent in going either clockwise or counterclockwise. As you traverse the loop, record voltage drops and rises according to the following rules or which will be summarized in the next figure where it is assumed that movement is from point A toward point B. The first one, if a resistor is traversed in the direction of the current, the change in electric potential across the resistor is negative IR. So if you're traveling from A to B and the current is in the same direction, so this voltage will be a drop equals IR. The second case, if a resistor is traversed in the direction opposite the current, the change in electric potential across the resistor is 
positive IR. So you are traveling from here to D, from A to B, and the current opposes your movement, so it will be plus IR. Third case, if a source of EMF is traversed in the direction of the EMF from negative to positive direction, or uh, from negative to positive pool on the terminals, the change in electric potential is positive, meaning that you raise the voltage across the circuit or the loop. The last case, if a source of EMF is traversed in the direction opposite the EMF from positive to negative on the terminals, the change in electric potential is negative. Let's practice solving with Kirchhoff's rules. Here we need to find I1, I2, and I3. Let's begin with the first rule at which I1 equals, uh, sorry, I3 equal I1 plus I2. So in loop A, B, C, D, A, we will start from A back again to A. In this, we are raising the voltage by 10, then it drops by a value of 6 I1, then to the second uh, resistor at which the voltage also drops again to negative 2 I3. For loop B, E, F, C, B. Here we will begin from the point B, going to E and back again. So there's a drop in voltage equals 4 times I2. Then another drop because we are traversing from the positive to the negative pool in a battery, which equals its EMF negative 14. Then back again to the resistor of 6 ohms. We are traveling in the opposite direction supposed by I1, so it will be plus 6 I1. Then back again to the battery with the 10 volts. We are traversing from positive to negative pools, so it will be negative 10. Using equation 1, substitute I3 in equation 2, which gives this one. We will simplify it into this form and call it equation 4. Divide each term in equation 3 by 2 and rearrange the equation. It gives equation 5. Subtracting equation 5 from equation 4 eliminates I2 and gives I1. So 22 equals 11 I1, therefore I1 equals 2 ampere. Substituting this value of I1 into equation 5 gives I2 which will be equal to negative 6 ampere. I2 equal negative 3 ampere. And substitute these values of I1 and I2 into equation 1 to obtain I3. Therefore, I3 equals negative 1 ampere. Don't panic when results are negative. It just means that the proposed direction of current needs to be reversed. We can use the calculator to save all these efforts. Let's rearrange these equations like this. And let's do some magic using your calculator again. Here, we need to set our calculator to solve equations in different unknowns. Let's press on mode and choose the fifth choice equation. Here we will deal with three unknowns, x, y, and z, so we will choose two. Let's write the factors of all these unknowns, i1, i2, i3, in, these, uh, in this input, and we can find the values of i1, i2, i3, as we will see. Uh, for the first one, press 1 equal, then 1 equal, then negative 1 equal, and for the constant, 0 equal. Move on to the second equation, at which we will type negative 6 equal, 0 equal.
equal negative 2 equal and finally negative 10 equal 6 equal negative 4 equal 0 equal 24 equal again you need to press equal to find out the values x equals 2 x here represents i1 y equals negative 3 z equals negative 1 and this is the same as we found from our calculations your calculator can save your time